I'm here in front of my neighbor's property, right across the street from me. Look, they trimmed this big tree. It's actually a bunch of trees so that they wouldn't uh, cross over these power lines and hang over them and break them. So these trees, there's a, looks like at least three, maybe more. See, they got, they got the chop. I don't know what kind of trees they are. It's something kind of cypressy. They smell really good. They smell piney. See, as you can see, some really quite big branches got got cut. And one day I walked out here. The neighbor had dumped them across the street on this grassy patch. That's our side of the street. Haha. <laughs> so of course, see this area that's brown? That's where it was all on top. I took them all. That's right, I took them. The neighbor dumped them on our side of the road. They obviously didn't want them. They dumped a couple on this side. This one was part of it, and those those are the little branches. So I thought to myself, well, <laughs> such a windfall doesn't come every day. And given that it's clearly on our side of the road, it's free for the taking. There was a whole bunch here. So I took them. I took them all. There's one that I didn't take because it has the leaves of some other kind of tree that I'm not sure what it is. And I don't know if it's the kind of thing that will grow back from a branch. So I don't want to mess with things that I don't, I'm not entirely sure what they are. So I took them, hauled these giant logs. Walk, 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 walk. I'm walking back to our place now. This is our neighbor's place. He's got a peacock and uh, some sheep. At one point when I was dragging, I was going back and forth like a beaver. The peacock was watching me from a distance like, what is that crazy primate doing? And then walked away. <laughs> Obviously decided I was an unpleasant, dangerous primate up to no good. Here's our car and here they are. The loot, the loot in Russian, dabycha, dabycha. So here I kind of separated them out into different stacks. So these are like the big logs. This one actually, I mean, this one was super heavy and I actually couldn't lift it. I had to drag it. So I just dumped it here. The big logs, some of the little stuff. This is a mixture of big stuff and little stuff that I have to like take an axe to or something. And then some more pieces that are mixed. Look at all this, look at all this good stuff. Now you might think, Marina, why do you need all these dead trees? Well, as you may know from previous videos, we don't have a lot of soil in our area. And that's actually our main limitation with our gardening project. Just literally lack of soil. We're on a lava flow that's 500 to 700 years old. Here it is. And the amount of soil that has built up over that time, our soil profile, our like official soil profile is uh, zero to four inches. Lava rock. So but the remarkable thing is that this whole forest grows on zero to four inches, which tells you something about the plants that are adapted to live here and how special they are. So of course, you know, you can buy like tons and tons of soil, but really the way to do it, the, the materials for building soil are all around because soil is actually made from decomposing organic matter, primarily. It's also made by roots, by the roots that dig and break up the rock. And roots also emit their own, what's called exudates. Oh my God, look at that. Lilikoi flower. I think this is the flower of the Jamaican lilikoi, not the, so these are like the yellow lilikoi, which is passion fruit. And they have a white flower. I don't know if we, we see it around. There. This one's getting yellow, it's a vine. There's a yellow one. The Jamaican lilikoi is different. They don't have um, that hard. I think this is the Jamaican lilikoi. 
it's actually got kind of like a fuzzy outside and it has these little stripes on it and they're orange when they ripen oh. food thank you plant oh there's a lot of fruit in here so i like how they just get caught So the thing is that decomposing living matter, which is what organic means, including plant and animal, is what creates, what turns into soil. When these things fall on the ground, the leaves and the wood and all the different microorganisms get to work, breaking it all down, because for them it's food. Those microorganisms, what comes out of them as they process this, their output, is various kinds of proteins and other things that form food for other things and they themselves are food for other things bigger things and then you get your earthworms and all this processing of natural materials is where soil comes from and that's the principle behind mulch also so what that wood is is free mulch and it can do uh, different things. The biggest ones, the big logs, can go on the bottom of a planter bed and then get covered with smaller logs and then get covered eventually with something small like existing soil, mulch, etc. And so I'm making a new planter bed over here. And this is one of the big logs that I already dragged over. And this is just going to get covered with more and more stuff. This will slowly decompose and release its nutrients over a long period of time to feed the soil that's going to be here. And the smaller pieces, those little... See, I already put some over here. These, these are great because they're already so little. They can uh, decompose really quickly and form like that fine leaf litter that is just really fantastic mulch, I hope. Now, I don't actually know, I know that some trees are not great for mulch because they actually inhibit the growth of other plants. I know like the ironwood that we have on the shores here in Hawaii um, do that. They, they prevent other plants from coming up chemically. And I don't know if these do that. I'm hoping they don't. But if anyone knows what kind of plant this is and what if, if I shouldn't be using it in the garden, please let me know. <laughs> Important to know. And as for where I'm thinking of putting them, I think I might put them in here. This area is fenced in, but it's mostly growing wild. We've got bushes and weeds and there's a banana, two bananas in here some kalo growing taro growing here there's a sugar cane that was only put in recently purple sugar cane from a friend of ours that was only put in recently so it can be moved um and the most special we have an extra special friend in here which is breadfruit ulu this is actually a baby of a very large old ulu tree that grows on the property of a friend of mine and it's it's been there it's like his grandma's property from before she died and that tree has been there a really long time this plant grew under it we were visiting this place one time and he let us dig it out i didn't do a super great job digging it out part of it broke and then when we transplanted it here uh it basically lost all its leaves and i thought it was dead but we kept it, you know, it got some pretty good soil with like, you know, um, with like food scraps in there because, you know, breadfruit are, are good eaters. So we thought, and it's a baby who is experiencing the shock of transplants. So we thought, let's go ahead and give it everything we got a good start. But this sucker came back. It came back. Look at that. Look at that. The main thing died, but this came off of down here and it made a new branch look at this look at this beauty amazing so this guy's gonna stay in here topographically this is a local low area and the main problem you know 
it rains a lot here and our ground because it's pahoehoe lava flow it kind of goes like that and eventually goes downhill right to the ocean so it kind of undulates like waves that have been stopped in time so we have these local low areas and more local high areas we get loads and loads of rain, which washes the soil and nutrients down to the local lows, primarily. So, you know, this area has gotten loads of mulch. Mulch, of course, gets processed, but now there's like almost nothing here. This used to be tall with mulch, but it got processed and a lot of it also got washed away. So, you know, how to prevent soil from getting washed downhill. I put a few little, like, there's like a little wood barrier over there. And uh, I put that down, but, you know, and it'll prevent, it'll keep some stuff in. But eventually it'll go down. So here I'm thinking, why don't we put those big woods to rot in place, which creates the network of the microorganisms and uh, mycelia, which is fungus, fungal networks, under the ground. Because every time you disturb those kinds of existing networks, it takes forever for them to come back. And like, you can't, you know, they have to do that work. You can't do that work. There's this whole network that exists under the soil. And as soon as you disturb it, it has to reform those connections. So it would be nice if we could let those woods rot in place so that the ecosystem is created and then you plant into it where you want it. I don't know if all of the wood is going to go in here. I'll probably use some for some other planter beds I have in mind. These are also good as like little borders for the planters. But that's the general idea. Now you know what the plan is for the free wood which they thought was garbage, but it's really beneficial. So I'll stop it here. Wish you guys goodbye. See you next time.